So last year we did a thing called the Regenerative Cannabis Farm Award. And the idea behind that was to um, really recognize farmers that are doing it right for our planet. We need to be sequestering carbon. We need to be changing our practices. And the best way to do that is regenerative agriculture. When we build soil, we're taking that carbon from the air, we're putting it in the ground. Um, so the way we grow a plant is a way to heal the planet. And that's what we want to talk about with this award. And the common denominators on these farms are they're looking way beyond cannabis. They're growing food, they're fully integrated and connected to their communities, they're taking care of their watersheds. These cannabis farms are so much more than just cannabis, but cannabis is at the heart of it and it's what enables them to do all these other amazing things. Regenerative farming is like this new wave of agriculture. And in typical agriculture, when there's tilling and there's all this machinery, we are pulling water and pulling nutrients from the earth and then there's little depositing back into the earth. So when we think of regeneration, just like you do to the mind, body, soul, just like cells recreate themselves, we have the earth recreating herself constantly over and over again. And we're only here as assistants and as, as stewards of the earth. We listen to what she wants and we provide. Being a regenerative farm to me is really just being in tune with what's going on around you, you know, and just being a part and witnessing the magic unfold. These plants were incredible. The soil was beautiful, the polyculture, their interaction with the community, and man, do they know cannabis. Just unbelievably healthy plants. Thank you guys. We just want to say thank you to all of you being here and for recognizing Dan and Jesse for recognizing regenerative agriculture. That is where we're going and we're really trying. It's not about anything else. It's about coming back into harmony, coming back to the earth, coming back to our roots where we all belong. We can do this together. It takes a community. It takes a tribe. Let's do this. We got this. Keep cannabis sacred. <laughs> Regenerative farming is so critical. They had an article in the New York Times about how with a certain amount of farms, regenerative farming and carbon sequestering could actually heal this country and heal the rest of this planet, just going back to the old time practices. So we can do this with all the help of people like Jesse and the, and the wonderful people up here. And if you guys just embrace that, we can really show traditional farming and the, and the rest of the agricultural farming in this world how to do it right. So we're the leaders. Thank you, Jesse. I think that we're living in a time where it's so important that we need to be really paying attention to how we can heal the earth and heal each other and help each other. And I think that regenerative cannabis has a lot of potential to do that. And we really feel like that that's one of our main goals of why we do what we do. We want to eat clean food, smoke clean weed. and the diverse and sort of small farmer farming practices that are happening too is sort of what we need to see throughout agriculture as well. These small family farms and people being able to sustain themselves on the land is really important. The land wants us to interact with it and to listen to it and imitate what it's doing but then bring it beyond that. Uh, thank you so much. This is such an amazing honor. We love what we do so much. We love being on the land and growing nutritious food and cannabis and it's just such an honor to be recognized for that and it's definitely something we believe that needs to be supported by consumers. So remember you vote with your dollars. So talk to your dispensaries and make sure you're having clean sun-grown cannabis that you're buying. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm really honored and um just thrilled that the Emerald Cup is, is taking the time to recognize care for the planet. When we're born into this world, we have an obligation not only to the world we're born into, but in, to the other people that we share this world with. And you can apply that to anything you're doing in your life. And it's been a big part of my passion and a big part of, of what brings me meaning and value in life to apply that to our farming. That we are in service to this land, to this world, to the people who help us, and to all the people on the planet by doing this. I absolutely love the idea of getting to stand up and shine at each other. Getting to step out and hold hands with leaders, keeping you know, the goals of 
the planet, the communities, the farms, this plant at the forefront was beyond exciting. It was recognition for these incredible practices that so many people have been doing. It's about community, it's about sharing resources, it's about taking care of your land. It's a big award for everybody. It's a big award for the whole community. Okay, so what's Hugel culture? Why are we doing this? So it's about building soil and sequestering carbon. And for us, it really works because our whole ethos is basically just using what we have on our own land or nearby. So the Hugel culture is really working for us, and I'll show you why in a minute, but just a little shout out to Nick and Liz at Green Source because they were the ones that we saw their garden and we were like, we're gonna do this. All I can say to everybody right now is, is for this to move forward, for this regenerative thing to move forward, we really need you guys to be a discerning consumer and make sure you figure out who you're buying your cannabis from and make sure those farms are taking care of the planet. Thank you. Thank you. You know, so many people want to know how to grow cannabis, but I want to say to you, it's not about growing the cannabis. It's about paying attention to the interconnectivity of all living things and all life. And once you start honing in on the fact that we are all connected and you care enough to want to care for this planet, you're going to want to start interacting with that in a way that's actually helping. And so what is actually helping? Planting diverse polyculture in your garden is actually helping the world get healthier. This is for the plant. This is for her and everything that she's given me and all of us. And I just wanted to take a second to thank the cannabis plant. <laughs> Infinite respect and blessings. Yeah. There's this major corporate vision you know, it's interesting. It's, it's not something that's going to heal the, the earth. And rather than being in competition to that, we have the ability to be an alternative. We have the ability to be the alternative. You know, one way to look at regenerative is sort of the opposite end of the spectrum from industrial. There was a time when organic was the ceiling and now organic is kind of the floor, it's the baseline and we're looking at these sets of practices that are above and beyond and, and that shifting conversation I think is, a, is an amazing thing and, and it's, it creates again this opportunity for everybody to be involved in. Seek out knowledge and information because that's a big part of the industrial paradigm is to deny people access to knowledge, information and the ability to gain proper food and proper nourishment and proper community activity. And that's something that we have the ability to take back for ourselves. Now these people, oh my God, the community they work that they do, these are beautiful souls who grow amazing food and amazing cannabis. Great success. We love you guys. Community is a basket that we all hold and weave and create together. It's a joy and an honor to share that journey. Much love and appreciation. Big up. One of the hardest things that I've noticed with people dry farming cannabis, they just, they want to do too much to the plant. They want to work the plant too much. There's like a million little things they want to do to it, when it's more about working the land around the plant. We do a lot of unconventional things that you know, we don't use trellis, we don't stake things, you know, we don't fertilize, we don't spray. Here we're lucky in Shively, we have amazing soil. You know, we don't need to do anything, which is makes us really lucky. I personally believe that it makes the plants stronger and I, I like the idea that the plants are like drawing up their own water, they're not being oversaturated, they're not being overwatered. We do runner cannellini Italian butter beans, dry and fresh, uh, heirloom tomatoes, beets, lemon cucumbers, eel river melon developed here in the valley, a bunch of sweet corn, sunflowers. And we got the winter squash, the delicata, winter, yes. and the blue hokkaido. I really love the fruit trees here in Chiba so much, and the redwoods, and the water. Yeah. And it, in the air, it's such a beautiful place. 
yes. being a part of it is incredible. It's an incredible time, and it's it's always exciting every phase of the season. This is less of a prize and more of a beacon of uh, please follow these examples and talk to us, be close to your local farms, get in touch with the earth, uh, strive for regenerative agriculture and being organic. It's, it's the future. Thank you so much for, first of all, making regenerative farming such an important part of this day. Organic is wonderful, but it has to go way beyond that. All of our inputs are sourced from our land, and they regenerate the land in a closed-loop cycle, and it's a beautiful thing. And that's the way our medicine is made, and that is translated to you, and you can taste the difference, and you will feel the difference. We want you to heal, we want the world to heal, and this is the way to do it together, is to thrive as one. We can't forget that the carbon and the nitrogen cycle is all about plants and animals. Sun to plant to animal to poop to plant, that's the cycle. And this, this farm has integrated the system of plants and animals so beautifully that they're providing the nutrition that they need on their farm with these animals and to the greater community. And that farm I'd like to welcome out here is Spencer from Lion Paw Organics. I'm absolutely humbled and uh, so grateful for this community, I'm so grateful for this plant. I just urge all you guys to go on that journey of creating your own slice of heaven and always learn something, always create something new and grow your own food, plant more seeds, yeah. both cannabis and food seeds, create diversity, create beautiful systems that work and take care of themselves and if you have the opportunity raise some livestock. Feed yourself, feed your earth, and give back to your soil. Thank you.